joining us via Zoom. He is a nurse in the, mostly in hospice care. His name is James Estabrook. James, welcome to the Megacast. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? How's your family? How are your colleagues? Keeping my chin up. It makes a better target. Uh, we're doing well. Keeping safe. Staying home. That's good to hear. Uh, it's National Nurses Appreciation Week, and I think it's safe to say we're all pretty proud of our frontline workers. We, we maybe haven't heard a lot of firsthand experiences from our nurses necessarily. How has this been for our nurses? What have been some of the challenges they've been facing? So um, I think that primarily, especially as of recently, one of the biggest challenges is just misinformation that seems to be passed around. Um, people thinking that a mask isn't helpful, um, different things that people have alluded to that just don't seem to show science backing it up. Um, and, you know, I, I know when it started, I, I used to be an ER nurse. I have a lot of friends that are in the ER. My wife is a resident physician starting up, uh, at the beginning of July in the ER. So the ERs and the ICUs definitely places where nurses are just getting, were, and probably still are having a lot of hard times. So for, you, for those that may feel that wearing a mask isn't effective, we see nurses and doctors wearing masks all the time when they're treating patients, uh, particularly in surgery, but also in, in other general practicing uh, measures. Why do nurses and doctors wear a mask? And how does that translate to our times right now and why we need to wear masks out in public to prevent the spread of this deadly virus? So in healthcare, you'll often hear people say PPE, personal protection equipment. Um, these masks prevent transmission of any kind of droplet that would come from your mouth or your nose as you cough, just breathing. We have vapors that come out of us that are able to transmit this. And so it's, it's a matter of protecting yourself, protecting your patients, um, making sure everybody stays safe. Um, one of the first things in, in healthcare is, is keeping people safe. So it is important because we're, because you, those who with this disease may be asymptomatic. They may not be showing signs that they're, that they're sick at all. And then it becomes even easier for them to pass that on to other people, which is why these masking measures are in place. Um, so for you and, and your patients, what precautions with COVID-19 out there, and especially in hospice care, you're, you're dealing with, a, I, I would say, maybe, maybe more uh, elderly clientele mo most of the time. Uh, what precautions are you taking? What precautions do they have to take because they're a more vulnerable population in hospice? Yeah, so I would say that my hands are probably the chaptest they've ever been. And I mean, I've always been really diligent to be washing my hands whenever providing care. Uh, I think that that's just increased tenfold for everyone. Um, washing your hands, you know, when I get home, I'm dropping off the clothes that I was wearing when I was seeing people, uh, making sure they're going directly to the laundry, jumping through the shower, because even your hair, um, a lot of the stuff that I've looked at, you know, there's a lot of places that this can stay on you and be transferred. And yeah, I think that you brought up one of the most important points is that there are plenty of healthy people that are asymptomatic and walking around unaware that they're carrying this. Um, you know, it'd be like carrying a machine gun around shooting people that was on your back. You didn't even realize it was there. And I think that that's the really big way to view this, that, you know, it's, it's, it's for the safety of your grandparents, your parents, your siblings, your, I mean, I, I say these things so that it might go deeper for people to realize that, you know, this can affect 
your family. You know, there's 60,000 people that have passed away right now that are just the confirmed cases. You know, um, there's so many people that are passing away of other diseases, but COVID is a part of it. And the other disease is primarily from my experience and coworkers and colleagues in the field that are, you know, the, the other disease is what's put down as the cause of death. So it's, it's even the numbers are maybe not reflective of how invasive and bad this really is. So you, you uh, James Estabrook, a nurse at a local hospice facility, um, you may not have you seen a lot of COVID on the front lines in, in your area of, of, of nursing and, and if not have you heard any stories from other nurses from other medical professionals that really take this home and explain just how dangerous COVID-19 is and all the more reason in that case why we should be wearing our PPE and keeping our social distance I mean there the stories are heartbreaking. Um, I know mothers who are living in their basement, not seeing their kids. I know fathers who are, you know, doing the same parents who are staying in hotels to protect their family so that they're not taking this home to them. Um, people who have had to do things that they've never had to do, make video calls for patients to see their families as they're essentially leaving this life and families that are just crushed by this, not being able to hold their hand. Um, I know some people who work in ICUs where, you know, they're, they're having to be that person's family for that moment because their family's not there. And so there's a lot that, um, we as healthcare professionals are doing in, in these times that we've never done in this way. Local hospice nurse James Estabrook with us on the Megacast on our family of stations. It's Nurse Appreciation Week. Uh, there's been a lot of appreciation being shown recently for our first responders, for those on the front lines in hospitals and in other medical facilities. And with, with what we've been discussing in this interview today, I, I feel the need to ask, what can we do? Civilians like, like myself, like Erica Jones in the studio with me, uh, my co-host today, what can we do right now and what can we do in the future to help our frontline workers? Um, wash your hands, wear your mask. Don't make the trip to the store for one item. You know, when you're going to the store, bulk up get everything that you could possibly need um stay home and stay safe uh you know there's at this point in time in history we've got more entertainment available in our living rooms than ever before you know it's it's difficult i'm i'm an extrovert so um my wife will tease me i'll go to kroger and spend two hours in Kroger just walking around and saying hi to people and shopping. So even as somebody that is completely extroverted and finds my energy getting refilled from social interaction, I'm, I'm staying home, I'm not going to the store. Um, so I would, I would pray that everybody would do the same. There's so many people that are hurting and dying and, and families that are losing loved ones so stay home, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands. And your mask needs to cover both your nose and your mouth to be worn properly. Um, so often I see the mask where it's, you know, the nose is completely open. That's not cutting it. Wearing gloves isn't as good as washing your hands. Um, there's a, a class in nursing school that teaches you how to put gloves on and off so you're doing it properly. If you don't know how to do it properly, you're probably not doing anything good for you or others. It's easier to stick to the gloves than it is to your hands if you're washing them. And so for those, just to follow up on that, for, for those that are 
wearing gloves. When is a good time for them to wear gloves? When is it a good time for them to not wear gloves? And what are situations where they shouldn't be wearing gloves at all? I think by and large, we're best off washing our hands. Um, there's few situations, unless you're properly donning gloves and doffing them, putting them on in a, in a technique where you're sliding it on and then you're only touching dirty items and then pulling them off so that you don't actually touch your hands afterwards. Um, I see people walking around with gloves and they're touching all the things that they would touch normally. You're just contaminating everything. So really, I think all the evidence out there points to just wash your hands, wash them a hundred times more than you ever have. Um, you're getting more bacteria, viruses, all that stuff off of your hands by washing them with soap and water. Water as warm as you can handle doing it for the 26 seconds that's recommended. You know, scrubbing the backs of your wrists in between your fingers, every area of your hands so that you're properly cleaning them. That's the best thing you can do. Nurse James Estabrook with us on the Megacast. Anything else that you, that we may not have touched on that you'd like to say uh, just shortly before we let you go? No, I just think that uh, as healthcare providers that we appreciate all the appreciation that's being shown. And, you know, as, as the most trusted professions over and over again through different polls that are taken, Trust your healthcare professionals to tell you what's right. We, 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 there's so much misinformation. I just want you to listen to doctors and nurses who spent their life dedicated to keeping people healthy. Well, thank you and thank your colleagues uh, in the hospital, in hospice, in hospitals and medical facilities all throughout on this Nurse Appreciation Week. James Estabrook, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Nurse James Estabrook with us on the Megacast.